And so on this lovely morning, we are on our way to Alang Manja. Uh, Alang Manja is this um, heritage Malay uh, kampung house that is tucked away somewhere uh, on, the, on the side of uh, Batu Caves at Gombak. It brings. It, it is a, a place where you can go to rest and relax. Uh, bring your kids, bring your family, and uh, enjoy a weekend of nature uh, away from the city. But we're not too far away from the city as we speak. But um, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a very interesting sight. Now we're gonna be talking with um, uh, the founder uh, on, about how he and the brother and he and his uh, family come across this piece of property and how they turn it from a dilapidated um, uh, uh, mess to to a, a beautiful uh, place that you, you can just you know get away from uh, from the hustle and bustle of uh, city life now the the distance between from um, coming from uh, KL it's not that far unless you made a wrong turn like how I did earlier that pretty much took away at least 15 minutes uh, to detour back to the right road otherwise it's very easy to find uh, they did a very good job by putting a GP, uh, GPS coordinate a, a Google map uh, coordinate on their website so I'm using I'm using an Android uh, device so all I need to do is just click on the link and it, it uh, opens up my Google map it's, it's a sage getting here. It's probably going to take you about what 30 minutes to to an hour to get here, depending on which part of KL you are at. But um, judging from the scenery I'm I'm, I'm seeing right now, I, I think it's pretty much worth it. I'm Patrick Lim, and I'm a first-time entrepreneur. I founded a company manufacturing and designing urban city bags here in Malaysia. And because I was new to business, I had tons of questions and challenges that needed answers. I started talking with veteran entrepreneurs and they would tell me these great origin stories of theirs. On this show, we talk to entrepreneurs about how they brought their crazy ideas to life. We get to hear their stories of adventure and challenges on how they started from zero to hero. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, Faisal. Um, why don't you share with us a little bit about uh, your background? Let's let's talk about yourself. Okay. Um, well, I graduated in music production, audio engineering, and music production from the International College of Music. Um, I think yeah. After that, I, I had my internship at this 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 particular production house. Um, I think. I was focused a lot on, on music then, like jingles, advertisements and everything. Then I went, I think just so happened one day I went up to the video department and I saw the video side of things and I got kind of interested in it. So I kind of leaned more to that So and I left my music behind and I pursued more video. Mm. But still I think something was lacking. I wanted, I mean, we, we wanted to create something which, you know, because uh, we had a lot of property. So we wanted to, me and Skana, to create something which we can call our own. So, and it's, yeah, so then Skana also was, was, had the same idea. And that's when we, we both discussed this project, this concept. But were you also in video production? No, uh, I, I, do, I did graduate with a degree in multimedia. Right. Uh, with, also with a postgraduate in business management. I was working in a bank, in an investment bank, uh -huh. um, banking simplified. <laughs> so I was working in a bank for about four and a half years and I, I thought at first it was interesting. The first two years were exciting, right. but after a while things started to get monotonous. Uh -huh. And I think a lot of people feel that, that you know, being in an office all day, you know, meeting clients, deadlines and all that, it was just something which I couldn't see myself doing for a very long time. So after it had been four and a half years, I had already been playing an idea, oh, I want to do something. You know, and you have all these ideas coming in and you, you plan them out, you write business plans, and then you find out because there's one obstacle, 
oh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So I, I had a couple of ideas shot down after doing a lot of research. Do you share those ideas? Oh, uh, all right. I, one of the things at, at the time which was very popular was uh, computers, which are still very right. popular now. Yes. And I was thinking, you know, um, I, I'm from an IT background. Um, uh, my brother, Fai, he, he's really good at computers too. I think we could do our own customized gaming computers and sell them to the public. Okay. Now, at that time, Laoyat was very popular. Right. And Dell was very popular. And those were probably my were giants. Were yeah. giants, you know? And I was just, I was doing all the costing and everything. I said, you know what? I might as well just go to Laoyat and buy a computer. <laughs> so, um, that was one of the ideas that shot down. Um, another one, which which I wanted to do then was uh, we are very much into football and indoor soccer, futsal. So we wanted to have our own futsal court. And I was looking at all these, at that time I was a little naive, I was looking at all these um, brands like Sports Planet and, mm. and all these large companies that do this sort of thing. And the startup cost was mm. a lot. The startup capital was too, too much. Lot. And for right. someone um, on the salary I'm earning, and, and you know, it was a lot of, of, of work and it involved a lot of money, which I knew I couldn't come up with at the time. So it was from there that we, we just kept bouncing ideas. Um, video production was one, but we didn't know how to get into it. We, were, we liked it, we mm -hmm. were very passionate about it, but we didn't know the business side of it because we had never started a business. And I, um, a lot of people don't have that experience. And I would read up all these startups, you know, how they would do it and all that. Um, it, it was so inspiring, yet I would always come across obstacles. It would always be about money. Yeah. It was, everything yeah. cost a lot. Whether for the video production, we needed um, we needed a camera, better camera, and the cameras would cost thousands and thousands. And oh yeah! At that time, I guess for for people like us, we don't really know how the process of actually going to a bank and getting a loan, or uh. to or to actually um, how to run it. We have to register as a company, as a business, and all that. So I would read up on all those things, and all my ideas would just get shot down. But we did what we decided to do was we started to advertise that with our friends through word of mouth that we do videos. And um, we managed to get our first client. Our first client, they were getting married and they wanted a video of how they met. Mm. And that's when, we, that's when we shot our first video and we shot it with a normal digital camera. And like mine? Like yours, <laughs> exactly like yours. So I'm Bro, not alone. I think yours is better actually. You know? Wow, really? <laughs> but, um, I guess what my really strong point is is that he's very good with software. Right. So he, he had taken multiple courses in, in uh, different software, Premiere, EDS and all that. So So you um, guys worked on Adobe? Yeah. yeah he, on Premiere? Yeah. So with that, um, with the footage, we made sure the lighting was perfect and um, we did everything on a makeshift green screen. We actually painted our walls green uh, in our room and then uh, we actually shot it all there. and it. It turned out actually really good mm. and from there <clears throat> slowly we started getting inquiries about doing videos and that's when we decided you know what let's make it official mm. and then um, after our third video and all that we managed to invest in a proper DSLR wow. uh, and um, and from then on that's when the video production side at the same time we did launch Alang Manja as well because um, Fai was into video but I was more into like Fai said something to call our own and this opportunity came where I found out that there was this piece of land which, which was not being utilized. Mm. And I thought, you know what, I mean, it's not being used, it's there, there's potential for it, you know, and I'm, I don't think a lot of people have this opportunity, so why not take it, you know? You always have to look for opportunities. Yeah, that's right. Something. So, yeah. um, that's, at that point, things were, I was getting a little fed up with corporate life. So. I had worked something out, I, I came to this place, I would come uh, on the weekends or after work, it's quite far, but I would come after work and I would check out the place and then I had this idea, mm. that, you know what, let's make it a nice place to stay, away you know, away from home. We don't have kampongs, we're KL, we're city kids, so we doing Hari Raya, we're always in KL, you know, and there's no traffic jam, we're happy about that, but we've always longed to know what it's like, kampong life, and this was probably the closest thing that we had to, we had to kampong life. So, when we came here, it was in a shambles. Mm. Um, wood was rotting, um, there was concrete everywhere, you know, unfinished buildings and all that. The previous person hadn't taken care of it. Right. Uh, it was being rented out at the time. Okay. So, what we did 
we had a vision. For us, it was beautiful. It was perfect. You know, it it was just the right size, and that's when we we actually I found out. Okay, we need to. How much will it cost to actually remove all this? Mm. Do this. Other contractors were really expensive, but we were fortunate to have with us someone who actually lives not too far away, who did a lot of carpentry work for us and did a lot of construction work for us. For a, he was a very honest person, mm. so he did everything for a very good price and. We saw the investment there, and we managed to find funding, and we converted the place. Will you be able to share how much was that? Was that a very big funding? Um, it wasn't okay. It wasn't as much as a lot of other places because right. you have to remember the house was was here. Basically, what we needed to do was refurb. upgrade it, refurb. Yeah, exactly, refurb. So I would say that the amount spent would be less than a hundred and. Hundred thousand, right? Okay, less than a hundred thousand. If you had seen this place, you would think it's it's you know it's a gone case. Unrepairable. Yeah. Unrepairable. Oh, no, like, 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 it's kind of said. Um, when you first came here, we used to come here like on weekends when the tenant was still running the place. Right. So we just came to what check. What were they doing? What, were they well, living here? Yeah, no, they, they had like camps around. But what surprised us was that even though there were like broken houses, broken bits of buildings around, people still came. Right. Like, children groups because they brought like camps they actually still can they will actually camp out in a, in a place which we thought was not suitable where like rocks in the ground there's no proper grass so it was also it was still a camping a camping it ground was, but it was, it was the, the standards was really and we realized that I'm not sure if it's just Malaysian but we, we realized that you can sell anything you know um, to, to anyone I mean yeah, even, 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 even though it's not the best looking place but yeah, still well, they would be volume to for each level yeah, you know? it, it, it was not safe even um i think like there were sharp objects all around like, yeah oh and, wow and, and, and kids were running yeah, around exactly kids were running around. <laughs> and we're like just camping or just everywhere so it was, so we thought you know it's we, we can do a better job and it's our land so we thought yeah we we, we, we we'll call our own and that's when we um how do you get funding funding basically was uh some of it was my savings from from where I was working before, sure. and then um, most of it was, of course, the best source of funding, which is our dad so ah, <laughs> and our mom. The so, best. Okay. So, um, but I, I, I don't think the the main. It's not so much what we realized the the capital we put inside this place. What was the tough part was the hours spent. Mm. We because we did we we couldn't spend that much money. You see, mm. so what we did. All the rocks about because everywhere like the whole place was filled with rocks. There was, there was no grass there. So what we did every day, every other day, me and Sandra, like means like manually wear gloves and pick rocks. up rocks. You know, with, with the vision in mind that you know we're gonna transform this place. There's no other way. I bet it was tough. I mean, you guys are. It, it was. It was really city tough. kids it was, getting their hands dirty. <laughs> I know my, my hands God. were smooth before. Now they're rough. So um, you're a man now. <laughs> <laughs> at, at first, it, it um we it was like kind of draggy. Right. But then, um, when when you have the bigger picture in mind, and and we realize that this land has been in our family for a long time, you see, and we want to make this work, you see. So we actually planted everything. We 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 removed everything with our bare hands. So and that that was the toughest part, I think. In is the the manual labor, and the only thing that drives you to to get get you past this is keeping in mind that you know the, the passion. I think the, the passion, passion is, is the vision, is, the, yeah. the the big picture of what yeah. this place could be. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Okay, now now that we are on that topic, right? Let's talk, let's talk about year one. Let's talk about the challenges, or even down to year zero. You know, um, uh, from concept of conceptual of idea all the way to getting the idea lifted. What were the challenges of of, of that period? Um, all right, we were on a on a tight budget, and right. we couldn't really spend a lot. If if we had the chance not to spend, we would. If we could do it ourselves, we would. Um, like I told you before, the whole place was covered in, in boulders and rocks and all that. So, to get contractors to actually remove it and all that would cost thousands, mm -hmm. you know, because there's a lot of manual labor involved. So, we actually did that ourselves and we just kept playing this mantra in our head Nelson Mandela did this, <laughs> so we can do this. You know? okay. So, we would carry and um, there is a whole ravine filled with rocks up to probably taller than twice yeah. the size of me, and, and we just did that. So we saved a lot there. We saved a lot there. Clearing up the place, all the rubbish and all that. We compiled everything and we just paid for the lorry to remove the rubbish and dispose of it for us. So um, that saved a lot of costing. Basically, was getting the place cleaned up. That was um, our biggest issue. Once that was all done, 
it looked even clearer now what mm. the place was going to look like. So um, that's when we started to draw up plans of what what we wanted, and we had that's where we had to spend money to get a contractor to to actually come in and put in the fittings to refurbish the place. Mm. Um, that was probably where a chunk of our, our money went to. Things like landscaping and all that, it was a chunk of our time, basically. Um, from, from there, things started to take shape, and we would come every day, and, and, and slowly, uh, it was beginning to look like the Alamanja we, we wanted. So getting the place up and running was, was probably the hardest part. Um, launching it and, and so forth was not really that difficult. Mm. I think getting it started, there were a lot of obstacles in the way, mainly it was more financial uh, obstacles. Um, but other than that, once you can, you can get things started and the ball rolling, the ball will still keep on rolling. So how, yeah. do, you, how, do, you get, how do you resolve the financial problem? Uh, yeah, apart from that, well, I mean... Was, apart did, from doing things ourselves, Yeah. Um, alright, uh, what we found was that a lot of the money would go to things like tables, furniture and all that. And we were thinking, how, how can we get past that? Because we go to furniture shops, each, each table is a hundred, mm. or it's a couple of hundred, it's this, that. Then we said to ourselves, you know, if I were to build it myself, what would it cost me? And right. we compared the prices and we would save hundreds of dollars just building the furniture ourselves. Yeah. So, so that's where we cut down on expense, by actually getting things built ourselves. A lot of the furniture here the that you see, the beds, were designed by us and put together by our by this carpenter that we, we knew and, and he, he works around here and the price was so good that we managed to save a lot there. Um, that was one way to get through the financial thing. Um, so by this time, right, you were no longer working and you were no longer working, how do you get were you already drawing salaries from somewhere or did the video the video production company actually help out in terms of uh, keeping you guys afloat or because without cash to, 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 oh, to yeah. roll personally, right, I bet that was that would have been some crunch. No, it, it, it was tough. It was tough. Um, my my salary at RHB, I mean, was covering us up to a certain extent. Right. Um, the video business was uh, surprisingly was taking off. Um, it was not much, but it was it did help with certain things. So we put in our own money. We put forth our case to our parents and what we wanted to do. Um, in way, the way that we presented it, I guess they were impressed and convinced that it could work. And I think they saw a new sort of vigor in us. They saw right. us motivated and inspired to actually do something instead of always being spoon fed and being told what to do. So I well, guess. To them, it was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Finally, you know, they're calling. You <laughs> they know? woke up. <laughs> so, uh, Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that took some time. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. They, they, were, they were. I think they were happy and, and mm. they were very supportive. I think we couldn't have done all this if. It wasn't for their support. They were very supportive of what we wanted to do. Um, they didn't, to be honest, they thought the video thing was kind of frivolous. But right. we kind of proved to them then that it was actually working out, and we impressed them with that so much so that they actually thought this was a solid idea. Mm. Because my mom actually is in the service industry, so she actually saw it as you know this would be a good opportunity, and she, we got a lot of of advice from her. Her she's had over twenty years experience in. Uh, resort as well, so she gave us a lot of advice there. Right, on how to run. Um, as an entrepreneur, I, I guess that's what we found invaluable. We needed a sort of mentor yeah. to actually tell us because I could search online all I wanted, but all these articles sometimes they no not, Malaysian context. Exactly, no Malaysian context, and they're not saying things that that I want to hear. I want yes. to hear the problems and all that. All right. the articles are about oh, you must be positive, you must. Be, we know all that, but yeah. we want to know what first are the obstacles. Knowledge. First hand knowledge. And this is where my mom came in with terms of marketing, with in terms of um, how much you should actually spend mm. and um, how you can save, whether a loan is required or not. So from there we were able to 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 actually proceed faster than we expected. Uh, we actually saw this project taking us maybe over a year. You know, to actually get it up and running, but it took us maybe around eight months, mm. eight months, six months, but possibly to actually get it. We fast forwarded it quite a lot because we actually cut through a lot. There was no room for mistakes for us because right. there's no such thing as pouring in money, and if it doesn't work, pour in more money. Mm. We had to make it work because we can pour in money once, yeah. we can't pour in money twice. And um, 
so all our decisions we would actually think about it think 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 and then check out other possibilities then only spend because I think uh, everyone's heard the saying where most businesses fail most startups start yeah, ups fail well, and all the first, that first two years first two years we, we couldn't expect that we want to minimize that risk I mean right. two years still hasn't passed but um, so far things are going as planned mm. you know so it was from there that that with that knowledge in hand with that with our mentor we were able to actually um, proceed with the project itself so how long has it been in, uh, in operations uh, we actually uh, we actually believe it or not got our first uh, how appropriate our first guest on September 16 right. Malaysia Day okay. so it was, it was um, we had launched actually a week Okay, right. and we got our first guest and they stayed two how, nights. How do you get how do you get them? Uh through a friend of a friend. Right. You see, now with, with social networking and all that. Yes. That's the thing. The power of social networking is actually a it's a very powerful tool. Yes. Everything is done online. Yes. So um through that we spread the word, you target your friends first and your friends know and you take nice pictures and you put it up and you start tagging everyone, you know. <laughs> and um we actually had a, a mini launch. It was on Hari Raya itself. Right. And a lot of people came and from there a friend liked the place, promoted it to her friend, and she actually stayed two nights. A family of about 20 of them, 24 mm. of them, they actually 20. stayed two nights. Um, it was actually quite lucky because because they were friends, um, there was a bit of leeway in terms of mistakes that we could right. make. Right, yeah. So, okay. because we, I, I, have, I don't have any experience. First in, time? It's my first time, yeah. exactly. Because I think technically running it, I mean, being on the spot, it's just me and Iskanda. Yeah. So when guests come comes in, like to make sure everything's clean, make sure the safety is is. They are always looking for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we, we always had to be there. So we're also kind of unsure. So we're, we were quite fortunate that we managed to get uh, someone who is very lenient, yeah. who could understand. Oh yeah, it's your first time. You know that sort of thing. Because if we got one of those really strict you know, guests, you know, oh wow. Yeah. Do you yeah. have any? Uh, we haven't had so far. We haven't had. We're lucky. Uh, I think we have managed. We're well, lucky. We managed to. Oh, luckily, so I far. I don't want to jinx it. But, uh, <laughs> so and all these are local, local families. Local families. Do you families. get like international family? Not uh, yet. Not yet. Not yet. Any plans on uh, on reaching that that? Uh, we hope to. We hope to. We try at advertising on um, international websites. Right. Uh, we have had a couple of inquiries from England, especially, and um, Switzerland, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so far, none have stayed. I see. Yeah, so but I think we want to focus more at the moment on locals. Because local I think market. also what we realized when before we came out with this, mm. that after we cleared out the place, we made made it beautiful. I think we had different concepts like how we're going to sell it because we realized around here there's a lot of places similar where oh, yeah. you can stay, like next door you can oh, yeah, stay. Yeah. A lot of camps come in, so we thought to make it work, we have to be different. You know, we can't just be the normal stereotypical. Um, company does the same thing. So we came out a concept where we we made it like all the Malaya. That's why you see the things around uh, are like of a different time. Of a different era. Yeah, like the Independence Day newspapers and all these ads. Because I think back in Malaya, there was a lot of British influence. So you can see it all around this place. So that's, that's what we tried to do. And that's how we tried to differentiate between the other places. And we also tried to offer a kampung style experience, which it's quite hard to find. I mean, mm. and I, we, when, we, when we researched, a lot of it is outside the city. Like it's in way Ipoh, outside. In, in Go, Taiping, and yeah, so it's, it's we, we try to offer that. Yeah. yeah, That's how we marketed this place. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, what, what would be your top three things you would like to share to would be entrepreneurs who perhaps also want to do similar things? Um, okay. For me, it would be, I, I guess, um, always believe in the idea that you have. Right. No, but people will always shoot you down. Our ideas were shot down left, right, and center, up and down. You know, um, so we had some really tough moments. We had some tough moments, and everyone was telling us how, how oh, no one's going to go to your place. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so yeah, far away. It's so far away. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's not people prefer five-star accommodation sure. and all that. You know, you will always have the pessimists. But I think... Those are the ones that I thank because from there, I, when I can answer their questions and their queries and their challenges... It solidifies your idea. Exactly. Because I don't... I like people telling me, oh, it's a good idea and all that. Yeah. But I prefer people telling bad me news. that it's bad news. It's not going to work out. It kind of reaffirms my belief, mm. our belief that this place can work. Um, I think the, sec the second thing is, is that 
uh, I guess money is, is is something which which is required in this project and uh, that would probably be that's one resource that is very difficult to come across. It is, it is. Uh, financing is, is is difficult and people a lot of people don't know oh how much should I set aside, how much, you know, how long I should have, you know, be able to, to sustain the business and all that. I think it's very important that you get funding mm. before knowing before going into a venture like this. Because if you have funding just for a year, mm. uh, it's not enough. Target more time and try and be very generous with your funding because so how long do you guys take before you could you could finally say okay it's not profitable but we're breaking even uh, we, we are we are able to pay bills you know at least pay a, a, a basic wage for everyone including yourself how long did that take from inception uh, from um, from launch to to that point oh we had already calculated that um, per month the amount that we we break even point per month Break even point per month was uh, we actually needed one guest, <laughs> wow. one stay. Because um, technically, it's just me and Skana, and we have a cleaner. Right. So, okay. Okay. So okay. It's more yeah, than and space. you own this space, yeah. so you know they there don't is have no that. rent. rent Inherited rental. the space. I, I guess that's one. Um, probably it, it, to move on to my third point. Mm. I think that there are opportunities everywhere. Yeah. This this place actually has been with family for for over thirty years and. And we just didn't see it. But the thing mm. is, if you look hard enough, there are opportunities there. We we were we were doing videos for over ten years now, but it was only two years ago that we, where we thought we wanted to go into the business, and it, it's worked out. So there are opportunities. You just have to look for them, and you have to take them. You have to turn them into something that you can be passionate about. Mm. But, uh, yeah. Again, to interject, I think also another main point is before you start a business. Um, I think what's very important is passion. Before you do it, I think to make sure you see it through, you have to have the passion. Because I think a lot of people, also me last time, um, I wanted to start something, but halfway through, after doing a half, I'll just quit out. Burn out. Yeah, so you have to have the passion to actually finish it. Yeah. If not, it's just going to be a waste of time and see it through. I think that, that's very important nowadays. Yeah. Mm. So you, you, so this project really, you know, in a way, uh, uh, proved something to you. Yeah, personally, you have yeah. a very personal yeah, attachment to this to this property. Definitely. I think most of the things we do when guests come, it's always us here, and when guests go out in the river, we're always there. Like we actually ourselves, we take them out. We're very hands on. Yeah, we try to be. Uh, we make it a very personal experience. Mm, and no also, way. like yeah, passion plays its part. It's like we like to do it. So that that's what I think. That's also like behind. meeting new people. Like yeah. you know, uh, we try to. That's another thing. We try to integrate our other business video production into this into this thing. So you can try to combine things to provide synergy so, mm. so things can work together. So we try to do everything and like I told you just now, we, we mentioned that we wanted a futsal court before and it was shot down just like that. But believe it or not, in, in You're gonna build one next door. <laughs> in about a month's time our football field will be ready. Right. And, and um, we're quite happy about Amazing. that. Amazing. So it, it when one project works, it inspires you to work and shows you that you know yeah. a never say die attitude will always get you through. You will always be shot down. Right. You will always be shot down. So now we have our foot foot south court, and we hope hopefully we'll have a foot uh, horse ranch. We like riding, so horse ranch, and from there on, I, I guess the sky's the limit. You know. Wow, this is gonna be one piece of work. <laughs> okay, last question I always ask. You know, uh, where do you think you guys are right now? Do you feel you know zero or hero? I would say we're still zero. We're mm. still very young. Um, we. How are you? Oh well. Uh, I mean, <laughs> as in the business, we're still very young. But uh, I'm 27 and uh, Fai is 26. Um, but in young indeed. Yeah, yeah. In terms of of the business, I mean, we've only been in operation for less than a year. Um, we we still have a lot to learn and i think that with every guest that comes here we actually learn something new mm. which is which is good um but we also we also know that um it can go wrong at any moment so we're always prepared uh i wouldn't say we're heroes yet but i think it'll take a couple of years before we can call ourselves heroes but heroes fall but yeah. making a being a hero is actually rising up again. And but I think that those moments, I think when a guest comes and they stay and they like the place and they tell you that, I think at that time, just for that short brief moment, you feel inside you're a hero. Just for a while, because everything you've built, 
and someone actually compliments it and likes it, you know, but I think you, you would think, you feel on top of the world. You feel like, yes, this is what I wanted. This is what, why we did, yeah. what we did all this. So, but we're still zero, I think. 0 0.1 maybe. Uh, 0 0.1, okay. <laughs> oh, that's a new one. <laughs> okay. All right, before we, before we, we close, um, is there anything that you would like to plug? Or uh, how, how do they come, how do you, how do uh, people hook up with you guys to get, uh, to, rent this, to rent this place? Oh, uh, how much would it cost them per night? Oh, okay. Um, basically, to stay overnight here is, is 1,003. Mm -hmm. um, for up to 20 persons, mm -hmm. uh, it it's includes breakfast. Uh -huh. uh, we usually provide complimentary karaoke, and uh, if they want to rent, we have barbecue dinners as well. Or they can you can do your own barbecue dinners. The place at night is actually very well lit up, so it's it's worth staying in the night. Mm -hmm. But we also provide we do day trips. Uh, day trips, uh, it's about 780, um, because we have a clean up surcharge of 100 ringgit. So um, we usually market online. We have a website, uh, www.alangmanja.com, and we also have a Facebook page. Uh, but we realize that marketing is, as much as, as we know the power of social media, we actually still need to go to newspapers to actually market. We, we, we market a lot in, in newspapers. We put up ads in the newspapers, and mm. the type of people who inquire from our newspaper ads and from the social media they're two very different types. You know? yes. They're the types that don't really, you know, what's Facebook? You know, <laughs> you know so, but um, it's, it's good. It's good. I, I think marketing is actually very important. And yes. it's right now, we're just trying to get the word out that Alamanja exists. Oh, we have a Facebook page too. It's facebook.com Alamanja. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Right. I think that's about it, right? Yeah. All right. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very thank much you, for Patrick. the visit. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, anyway, uh, welcome Patrick to Alang Manja. My name is Iskanda and my brother Faisal. We both started this project about a year ago, a year ago, a year and a half, December 2010. Uh -huh. So um, this land actually belongs to my granddad and uh, he recently transferred it to my family. So it, it's, it's family land. We've had it for over three generations now. Wow. about 30 years. Okay. Uh, it's not just this land, it's also the land that you passed over there, which wow. is about 3.7 acres. Right. Alamanja itself is about uh, three quarters of an acre. Okay. Um, the house is actually over 50 years old. It's an authentic kampung house. It was actually uh, dismantled and brought over from Batu Caves. Batu Caves, it belonged to um, an, a plantation manager, an Englishman, who built it for his young Malay wife. So it's quite an old house. Uh, we've kept it as authentic as we can. We have built in hot water because that is very important nowadays. <laughs> um, the water from uh, the water for the whole resort itself comes from the river. Uh, the house water is filtered, but all the water is from the top of the hill. Oh, okay. so, so it's, it's natural. It's natural river water. Um, the outdoor bathrooms uh, don't ha uh, don't have hot water. So it's nice and cold and very natural, as natural as it can be. So here we have um, the Datuk Majid Dewan. My grandfather uh, was formerly the Director General of Health, Tan Sri Majid. And uh, so we decided to name it after him. Uh, we try to keep, you know, keep it very personal. Like over there, uh, our mini garden, we call it Tenasirim. We've got all these personal names for all these things, tennis room. We try to make it like a sort of Eden of our own. So uh, the reception is located here. The reception and the Katika's Lodge. These buildings were actually half built when we uh, took over about a year and a half ago. So we decided to build it one into a Katika's Lodge and a reception. We have the outdoor bathrooms, which are new as well. They were also half built. We extended it to make it proper bathrooms. So we call it Victoria and Albert. So the, the bathrooms each have names. Uh, ladies, of course, Victoria and Albert for the gents. Well, as I was saying earlier, I'm very glad you decided not to keep the old jamban. Oh, no. Uh, the <laughs> we try to make it as modern. modern uh, toilet, as you speak. I, I think that's the perception when people want to go outside near the jungle. They're yeah. always concerned about bathrooms. And Malaysia, you know, we have 
some of the best bathrooms in, <laughs> in the world. So we try to maintain that standard. Um, Edward and Mrs. Simpson. I think you've heard of Edward and Mrs. Simpson. And there's a movie that came out. Uh, that's the unisex bathrooms are all called. Uh, they have dual names. Right. So okay. Edward and Mrs. Simpson. Okay. Uh, I'll just show you around first. If you can see all the landscaping, it's it's all over the place. It's because we did it ourselves. We didn't hire a professional landscaper. Right. We chose plants which we liked. We don't really know very much about plants, but we learned a lot in the process. Okay. So we've got um, our bungaraya. And, oh yeah, we, we've put poetry, English and, and Malay poetry, all around the place. So we take a lot of inspiration from England. Right. So, so here. You think, you think all the lavatories are gone? So. Oh no, <laughs> not yeah, one of them is actually, but <laughs> that's upstairs. Uh, Tana Pusaka, this is the song. So a lot of the plants, they, they weren't around. Actually, this whole area was covered in, in stones. Mm -hmm. So we actually had to pick up all the stones. We, of course, we couldn't pick up these ones, which you right. see here. <laughs> but uh, other than that, we planted everything. It took, about, it took about six months for us to get the place ready. But the landscaping, we actually just finished it end of the year. We, finished, we were satisfied with the planting that we had done. This is a, um, a new structure which we built. It's called... Uh, Vanny's River Deck, Vanny, my sister, so we named it after my sister. It's actually, it's high, it's really nice and cool up there and... Uh, Is there a reason why you, you named it after your sister? Uh, <laughs> no, no, she's not cool, but... <laughs> no, but... Um, does she spend a lot of time here? Yeah, she does actually. Whenever she's here, she's uh, sitting up here, so... As you can see, this morning we had rainy weather, so the river is all... Oh yeah. Yeah. It gets quite high. Generally the river is actually quite clean. There's a dam over there so it releases the water. So this is just a place to relax and chill. It's a little steep. So, um, I'll take you to the bridge. Yeah. So, I actually come from a, a family with, we have, there are five of us. Uh -huh. It's me, my brother, and then I've got three sisters. Uh, 20, 12, and 9. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I had to check there. 20, 12, and 9. So, um, Faisal got the bridge. Oh. So, Fai got the bridge. Um, it's called Fice Bridge. This used to be the main entrance. Oh, I see. Cars would park at the front over there uh -huh. and they would come in from here. Uh -huh. But we decided we wanted a larger entrance. We wanted a place where cars could park safely. Right. So we moved it to the other side. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah. The water is actually blue if you look at the pictures. But as Not you can today. see, <laughs> today is Milo day. So <laughs> we get a lot of, you know. So this road will lead to where you came in on the right, yeah. and if you go left, you'll go, you'll head towards the dam, okay. and also it's our jungle track area. We'll take you to a waterfall about half an hour away. Right. It's called uh, Sungai Pisang Waterfall. Uh huh. So it's about half an hour to forty-five minutes. Yeah, we would we would take this path, and then it would we would cut into the river, and you actually pass the Karat Highway. Mm. You walk side by side Karat Highway. So. This is the bridge. We've got our own private gate. We've also tried to maintain the cleanliness of the area. One thing we realized after taking over the place was that a lot of people don't really appreciate rivers. This whole place was covered in, in rubbish and all that. So what we did every week, we started cleaning up. We started um, picking up rubbish. We started, we, we got the first week, I think it was about five, six bags full eat per day. There was a lot. We, we cleaned up a lot and that's quite sad because it's actually a very beautiful place. Yeah. And still we see people throwing rubbish but it's one of those things. I guess we, we want to, by example, we, want, we hope that people will catch on and, yeah. you know, throw their rubbish away properly. So this is our private path gate to, to the river. Uh, if you see, we've actually planted our own grass as well. So that was something new. 
and I didn't realize grass is actually a very good business. It's quite expensive. <laughs> so are plants. <laughs> but uh, my younger sister, we call her Ade or Leia. She got Ade's herb garden. So she got the herb garden. And uh, my sister Serena, I'll show you the kitchen. She got the kitchen. It's it's a take on the popular TV show, but we call it Belle's Kitchen because her name is Serena Isabel. So yeah. So we have Belle's Kitchen. It's a proper kitchen with uh, I'll open it. Yeah. It's a proper kitchen with microwave. Uh, you can cook. You can prepare food. We provide all the dishes. So you get you get to use all these utensils. Or um, is there is there a, 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 a cook? Well, we do provide catering, mm -hmm. but but in terms of cooking, you can't do any heavy cooking here. You can prepare right. food, you can make Maggie and stuff, but we don't allow heavy heavy cooking like right. fried kway teow, you know, fried rice. We don't do that uh, because we actually took the we took we got the certificate to actually run this kitchen, so we try to maintain it to just us. Uh, in terms of safety as so. well. Uh, everyone got something named after them. I got Iskandar sink. Oh, that's very nice. I know, it's a sink. <laughs> and it's faulty and leaky too. So <laughs> it kind of shows character. So <laughs> we, we got the, I got the sink. So it's, it's, This is my legacy. <laughs> You'll be remembered. <laughs> I hope so. But... Um, that was the outside of the house. Mm. Uh, underneath the house, we actually provide um, free flow of coffee, tea, uh, Milo. We provide snacks. Uh, we've actually we've actually put a lot of our own personal things around the house. A lot of ornaments and artifacts. We like to call it artifacts. This picture here was when um, Lat actually came to visit, and after he came to visit, he did a print of of a kampung house and. It's sort of to. Homage. Uh, yeah, it, it's sort of inspired by Alang Manja. So I, he was a friend of my grandfather. So, um, so yeah, so we put it up here, a lot of the. See, you can see the old records and, um, and the books we have. This was a book actually written by, by my mom and illustrated by, by my brother, Faisal. We actually did sell it. I think it was a, a sleeping bestseller, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yep, I'll show you the house. Find the lights. Okay. So this is the house itself. This is the balcony. Um, I'll show you the house. The house can fit 20 people, 20 people comfortably. We've got three rooms, the Bilik Madu, which is basically the honeymoon room, but with a twist, I, <laughs> with separate beds. <laughs> okay. um, this is, if, if they want, they can put it together. It's more like a family room and a private room for maybe, they say, VIPs and all that. We've actually put pictures of of um, famous celebrities of a time before. So you kept it, you kept it very authentic? We did. We kept it very authentic. authentic, authentic. Um, as you can see, the place is littered with, with all these photos. This is our, actually our, we call it our history cupboard, our little museum. You can see the Sunday Times. That was from the, when we gained independence. Wow. And then the dolls that we have. These are all old dolls. Time. And we have um, different th different artifacts, your cameras. Um, so these things uh, I've not yeah. seen for many, many years. Oh, for a very long time. It's way before our time. Oh, yes. So you can see the way Cadbury's, the milk tree chocolates, was very popular back then. Yeah. So this is our little mini museum we have here. Um, a lot of this stuff belonged to to my mom, so you, you kind of know how old she is. <laughs> so, but, um, a lot of these posters were also taken from that era. Uh, see Malaya, at that time traveling, you know, we, you, if you could, you could travel by, by plane, but usually it's by boat. Yeah. 
These are prints. Oh, uh, prints. <laughs> prints of authentic photos. <laughs> so we have a. We do have. Uh, we have two bathrooms upstairs. This is John and Yoko, uh -huh. and John and Yoko. Huh? Um, it's a unisex bathroom, so we've got two taps and we've got hot water here. Uh, this is usually for anyone who wants to use it. The girls' bathroom, which is called Billet de Fun, is actually um, can fit nicely about eight eight girls. We do have mattresses. We do allow uh, more than twenty, but we try to limit it to twenty, maximum twenty six. So they have their own bathroom. They have. Uh, you notice there are no aircons in this house. It's because it's very cool. I I I had to I used to sleep here with two blankets on, uh -huh. fan off, and the windows had to be closed. And still, I would shiver. It gets really cold at night. I think because um, there's not a lot of concrete, heat cannot cannot uh, heat is insulated very quickly. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you can see we have um, paintings. We have a lot. Billet Tepi is, is the guy's room. Uh, it's quite spacious. They've got their own veranda as well. Play games and... You know. As you can see, it can actually fit a lot more than 20 people. Yes. These beds were actually custom made. We found someone nearby who actually makes, who's a carpenter and actually makes beds. So we, we drew up the designs ourselves. So we, we saw something that we liked and we, we did it up. We got him to do it and uh, we used a higher grade wood. Wood is very expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would think not so much, but wood is very expensive. And, uh, so we got this these custom made beds. They're very sturdy, very strong. Even uh, the cupboards too. This is all old furniture. Um, we also provide a lot of magazines. The house itself, it has um, Astro, which is very important. <laughs> Astro, um, we don't encourage watching TV, so we have we don't have a flat screen TV. This is more small size TV. We've got a DVD player and we do have some DVDs which they can borrow. We have a lot of board games which we can uh, lend to the guests. We have a karaoke machine which is very popular especially at night. Uh, I realize that when people sing in the jungle they have to sing all night long and, sing and sing louder too because you know, no home part. <laughs> but um, we, they karaoke downstairs. All meals are downstairs. Uh, we actually allow other caterers to come in. You can bring in your own caterer. We don't limit it to our caterer. We have a set of caterers, but if you want to bring in your own, it's perfectly fine. Where we don't, there's no constraint there. 